first thing I did to build this little project is I opened up my mini composition book cover. And like I usually do in my videos, I'm using the PES file and not my working file because I want to show you what it would look like for you and not just what I see when I'm making the files. So I grabbed it. I selected the file, the whole thing by clicking on the design right here. I rotate to the left, 90 degrees counterclockwise. And you see now that here's my file and to the left is the uh, fold over elastic placement and tack down if you're gonna use that. I always orient that to the left and I do my design to the right. I don't even use the fold over elastic, but I'm just used to doing it that way because if you use fold over elastic, you want that on the back of your notebook and you want your design on the front. So I always do it that way just out of habit. And if I ever use it, then I'll be doing it the right way. So then I'm gonna go over to my folder with my scallop applique which is available at designsbylittlebee.com. It is a square shape, so it's three by three, four by four, five by five, six by six, seven by seven, or eight by eight. I'm gonna choose, again, the PES file. I've got it open over here on the other side of my computer, my other monitor. So I take it and I click on it and I drag it over here and drop. Okay, now it brought it right to the center. So I'm gonna go over to the right where my objects are. I'm gonna click on the scallop and I'm gonna hit my arrow keys. Da 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 da. And I'm gonna take it uh, to the right about where I think it needs to go. I think it's about there, okay? I always put it a little closer. I always put my design just a hair closer to this edge because when it folds, you're gonna take out just a little space in that. So I like it just where it's about centered on the front. Then I'm going to, for this particular project, I'm showing you how to make one project, okay? I'm going to expand that object and you see the placement, tack down, and satin. For this particular project, I am not going to use the satin, so I'm going to click delete, and it's gone, okay? Now, for me, I do not like to deal with the remove hidden stitches in Brilliance and what if it uh, doesn't save one part of the file. Um, removing hidden stitches is a thing that's covered in lots of other videos. When I do a file like this, I don't insert the scallop or the design into this design, okay? I just don't do it, because I don't want to. What I do is I take this just as it is in my machine, which looks like the whole composition book, and then the whole applique, and I just skip back and forth in my machine as I want to. I just save mine as it is, I take it to my machine, I know which order to stitch things in, so I don't worry about all the saving and putting it in the right order and all that stuff. Plus, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure book <laughs> me when I'm stitching it. So I'm going to save this file as whatever I want, um, mini composition book, sh uh, scallop shaker, and I'm going to save it to my machine and we're going to go over that way. Now we're moved to our machine and we're going to start stitching our mini composition book holder. The first step is the placement for your mini composition book holder. And usually I say I don't think cutaway or tearaway matters. For these particular projects, I use cutaway. I do that because for these, it's a large space and we're doing a lot of manipulating to the, um, to the design and to the stabilizer. And I just like that extra because the tearaway I use is so clean and tears so easily that I prefer to use a cutaway because I just feel like it stands up to the manipulation better. But you may find that that's not the case for you and that's fine. At, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter because it's an in the hoop project and it's just gonna be cut off the edge anyway. I am stitching, for those that always ask, I use a PR655 by Brother and I use Durky Easy Frames. They are like fast frames, but I like them more. Now the first thing you wanna do if you are using fold over elastic, your next two steps in your instructions are going to be to do a placement and tack down for your fold over elastic. I almost never use that step, but I include it just in case you want to. If you are not using those steps, then you can skip the placement and the tack down step for the fold over elastic. Since I saved this design as is into my machine and I didn't change the order like I talked about earlier, I'm going to need to skip forward to where I see the placement step for that scallop applique and I'm going to run it. It does not matter what color you stitch it in, this is going to be covered up. This is just a placement for your piece of fabric. Next, I'm going to take the piece of fabric that I'm using for my applique, and I'm going to, if I can open my hoop up, 
I'm going to, oh, now I need to move you. <laughs> I'm going to take my piece of fabric that I'm using for my applique. For me, I'm using this weird um, picnic table kind of fabric that I got at Joanne. It's got that shiny uh, polyester-y kind of fabric on front and then the fuzzy on the back. And I'm going to place it, I cut mine pretty big because I wasn't sure which part of the fabric I was gonna wanna use. So I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna put these characters this is really cute fabric. I'm gonna put these characters right where they're kind of in the middle of that scallop. So place your fabric where you want it, just like you would do with any other applique, okay? And I want you to go back a step in your machine and run that place, run that placement step again. If you don't know how to go back and forth in steps in your machine, please bust out your manual right now, like pause the video, Learn how to go back and forth in steps and do that right now because it will say you need, that's like a basic tool of using your machine and you have to know how to do that. On my PR655, I will show you, hopefully I don't get the kitty litter box in the background. <laughs> um, in my PR655, it's right here. It is a needle and I can go minus means back, plus means forward. So I'm going to go back to this placement step And I'm going to stitch again that placement and it's going, I'm going to use that as like a tack down. Oh, wait, first, let me not be, do as I say, not as I do. Pin your fabric down. Do not run an applique and stick your fingers in your machine to guide your fabric or hold your fabric down. Just don't do it. Look, I'm a bad girl. I do lots of things I shouldn't when I'm embroidering, but the first time I got my finger caught in that machine and the needle went right through my thumb, I didn't do that anymore. So always be sure to pin down or adhesive spray your fabric. And you can see that I didn't even do that great of a job with mine and it kind of started to go awry over here at the corner. I should have pinned it all four corners. So sorry I didn't do that, but I'm trying to go fast. So you can take your pins out if you pinned it or tape if you taped it, whatever you did. Now I want you to trim around that applique, all right? Trim around this fabric. You don't need to give yourself too much uh, seam allowance. It also does not have to be, I mean, do give yourself seam allowance. It doesn't have to be real close to the edge because we are not using a satin stitch. So, and it doesn't have to be neat because you're gonna cover this edge up. So I'm just kind of willy nilly. Only thing you wanna make sure of really is that it's not gonna stick out um, the edge of your notebook. Okay, so it doesn't even matter. This is just a sloppy job that I did. Return my hoop in there, my frame. I don't know, does it bug you guys that I call it a, a hoop when it's a frame? I call them all hoops. Um, it's kind of like I still say tape when I'm talking about a recording of a, a favorite TV show. I say, oh, did you tape that? <laughs> So I don't know. I call these all hoops, even though this is technically an easy frame. All right, our next step, and this one is where you have to sit by your machine and watch it to make sure that you do this right, okay? I want you to go back to that step before, your same old placement step for that scallop. If you're doing this in software and you really want the steps in order, you can copy and paste this placement as many times as you want, just like you can copy and paste any other step. I'm just showing you how I do it because I, like I said, I'm kind of adventurous and I like to use that back button and forward button and just play with as many elements in the design as I want to. So next you're gonna grab your piece of vinyl. This is your little window for whatever you're about to add to your design to make it a shaker. If you're just doing a reverse applique and you don't want the quote shaker, element of it, you don't have to do this step. But here's what you're gonna do. Place your piece of plastic. This is plastic that I got at Joanne. 
It is in the home deck section. The gauge that I usually use is 12, just like I use with most um, ID or badge holders. This one in particular was a remnant and it is thinner than I would normally buy, but like it was cheap because it was in remnants. Um, so it's thinner than the 12 gauge that I usually use, but it still works. If I were making items to sell um, or if I were giving something away, I use my 12 gauge because it's a little sturdier. So here's what you wanna do. Go back to that same old placement, single running stitch. Hit go. Watch your machine, okay? It starts right here at that little scallop. Now stand by it and watch it. Okay, when it is about 75 to 80% around the design, I want you to stop it. I'm gonna tie off my thread and carefully remove your hoop from your machine, or I'm going to remove my frame body from my machine, okay? It's still right there, don't unhoop it, don't take anything out, just remove it, and you'll see as you remove it that you've got a little pocket right here where it did not go all the way around. That's why you need to babysit this one step because I want you to stop it when it's 75 to 80% done, tie off the thread if you want to, and then remove your hoop. And I'll show you what the next step is over here. Now the next step may seem very complicated because it can be pretty messy. If you're using glitter, <laughs> just good luck. <laughs> Um, if you're using googly eyes or little charms or sequins or something that you got, it will be a little easier. I love doing things the hard way, so I'm using glitter. Whatever you use for your shaker element of your mini composition book, you're going to insert it into the design by way of the little pocket hole that did not stitch shut. Do you remember that? So I'm using a spoon and I'm just going to dump that glitter in there. My office tends to be just a holy mess anyway, so I really don't care. I have a vacuum and I'm not afraid to use it. I actually quite like my vacuum. All right, so that is the messy way of doing it because I'm trying to go fast. I'm gonna tap, 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 tap. Now I've got glitter all inside that scallop, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, frame that I took off, I'm gonna take it back to my machine, and I'm gonna start it right where it left off to finish off this scallop. I'm back over at my machine now, and I'm going to use my buttons on my machine to back up maybe five or six stitches and start there to finish this placement for the scallop, which will seal up my glitter inside of it. And I know what you're thinking, it's not a great idea to have free uh, random roaming things near your machine, and you're exactly right. So when you're making a project like this, this is not the kind of thing that you wanna like go to the bathroom or go get a cup of coffee or leave uh, a child to supervise or anything like that. You need to really be sure to stand by your machine. For Since I'm using glitter, I, I wiped off as much as I could that was clinging to this vinyl so that it's all in the middle. If you're using something like googly eyes or a, a, a small metal element, certainly anything that you don't want near your needle or you don't want to fall out and get near your bobbin, that is great, great, great that you have that caution and you want to stand there and watch your machine carefully as it stitches and be prepared with your finger on that stop button in case anything should go awry. Okay, so mine just closed up that element with the glitter in it. So now the glitter is inside that scallop. Now I'm going to take my fabric that I'm using for the front of my mini notebook cover. For this one, I am using this beautiful, it's a raspberry color. I think it might even be called raspberry. I got this at Walmart. It's called faux leather. It's cheap, 
I use this fabric. It's so bright and fuchsia. I use it for a ton, a ton, a ton of my projects. And they have several colors. So when you go to the section that has the crafts and the fabric and the sewing stuff, you just want to ask for um, the faux leather. And I want to give you a tip as I'm doing it. I just thought about giving you this tip. If you're doing this project or anything similar where you have a large applique element, there I go again, getting lost, where you have a large applique element, you're going to need to cut through this. So you know that trick when you're cutting into fabric and you give yourself a little starting point? I'm going to do that right now. In lifting up my faux leather, I can see my scallop underneath. And I'm going to give myself a little snip right here in the middle. Okay, did you see how I did that? I just opened it up. I can see very well where this big three inch scallop is. And I gave myself a little snip, a hole. That'll give me a great starting point when I'm ready to cut out my applique. Now I'm going to pin carefully at every corner. I'm actually just gonna do three corners because I feel like I've already yapped too much. I usually do all four. I'm gonna close that up. Now, I'm going to stitch the next step. I'm finally moving on in my, um, in my applique shape. I'm going to stitch the next step, which would be tack down if you're using it as a traditional applique. It's going to give you a double stitch around that whole scalp. Now, I don't know if it matters really when you cut out this scallop. You could do it right now while it's in the hoop if you're comfortable with that. Seeing as how this is a reverse applique and so it matters what the edge looks like, I'm actually going to wait until the project is out of my hoop and then I'm going to trim around it so that I can be like sitting at my desk, comfortable, not worried about if I'm going to unhoop the project by accident. So I'm not going to cut it right now. I'm going to remove my frame from my hoop, uh, from my machine, and I'm going to put the pockets on the back of the mini notebook holder, just like we do with any other mini notebook holder. The next step is to remove your hoop or frame from your machine, and you're going to take your pocket pieces of fabric. I'm using blackboard fabric from Joanne and you're going to place them on either side of your uh, mini notebook design and line a straight edge up with those tick marks that you see on either side of the design. See, so mine's like that. I'm going to pin it down. Notice I wasn't measuring very well and I'm really gonna be playing fabric chicken, but you want to pin or tape those down. You do not wanna use adhesive spray because obviously you need to use it as a pocket. And be sure if you're using pins to pin from the front of your frame or hoop so that you don't have your sharp edges of your pins down on the bottom. Now, I do want to give you a little tip. This is the way that I have always made my mini notebook holders. I make them for myself, for my kids, for family and friends, for giveaways, etc. And mine, I just slap the pockets on and I go. So when my design is finished, it is going to look like this if I do nothing else, okay? Once I stitch that final stitch, the inside of the notebook is gonna look just like this. See how you see the back of those stitches? Now, if that bothers you, it doesn't bother me because I, I just make them for my kids or for myself. I'm not taking the notebook out of my purse and taking the notebook out of the holder and like showing people the inside, so I don't care. But if you're doing it for like maybe a bridal gift or something that's really like you want it to look a little more fancy or professional or finished, I'm trying really hard to do this right. What you wanna do is take a piece of fabric. I suggest something that's thin, such as this blackboard fabric from Joanne or a piece of Olyfun, O-L-Y-F-U-N, which you can find at Joanne and a lot of places online. I'm gonna take a piece that's about six inches tall, so as tall as my notebook, and approximately four inches wide, I think. It's either four or five inches wide. All you want to do is cover the inside of this notebook holder, okay? 
The reason I don't use a piece eight inches wide is because I don't want to tax my machine going through three layers of vinyl all the way around. And then when you fold it, it's going to be harder to fold because those edges are tacked down and you're going to have three layers of fabric. So I just use one just big enough to go top to bottom. So that's, uh, what, six inches tall and about four. I think it's four inches. Oh, look, I have a ruler. So right here, I think it's about four inches, four and a half. I'd say four and a half to five inches across. And all you want to do is before you, uh, after you place your pockets and before you run the final stitch, you want to just tape this down in the middle. See how that's going to cover the, um, the backing. Now, if you don't care, just run it like this. If you do care, slap you a scrap of fabric. Just put it underneath the pockets before you run your final stitch. As an example, here is a shirt and tie mini composition book holder that I've stitched out. And here's the inside of it. See how you can see the inside of the stitches? And here is a sample of a little notebook holder that I made for a local cat rescue. And I wanted it to be fancier because I was doing it as a fundraiser. So I used some embossed vinyl. It's about this wide and like this tall and I stuck it in there. See, that just looks, it looks more finished. So if you're making something like for a gift or a fundraiser or something, you can just stick a scrap of your uh, chalkboard fabric or some vinyl, marine vinyl, any of those non-fraying fabrics that we use in the inside behind the pockets before the final step. I have now returned my hoop or my frame to my machine with the pockets underneath, they're underneath securely pinned. And I like to use a piece of elastic cording to close my notebook. You can find that at pretty much any craft store. It's this stuff. It's called elastic cording. It's the stuff that you make little stretchy bracelets with, with the little pony beads or alphabet beads. You can find it in the general crafts section of most craft stores or maybe in the beading section. And by general crafts, I mean um, googly eyes, sequins, pompons, that kind of thing. So I like to use that elastic cording. So I just stitched my placement circle for that. You don't have to use that. I do it because I like a little guide to make sure I center my uh, hole for my elastic cording because I am a little clumsy. So now the last step is going to be a finishing stitch on the back. I mean, a finishing stitch all around your notebook. This is going to sandwich in all of the um, all of the layers, the front and the back, and or the front and the pockets. And you notice what I just did? This is to make sure I don't have a nest on the back of my design. I did one stitch, and then I pulled up on my thread, and I pulled that bobbin thread out. And then I just keep it there for a second to let it tie off and catch without nesting at the bottom. That's just a little tip. Now, when this step is finished, before you whip your project out of your hoop in an excited fashion, before you whip your project out and start cutting around it, after that final step is finished, remove your hoop and just check the back. And I can see that, look, my little game of fabric chicken did not pay off. That bottom that piece did not catch because I didn't measure right and I didn't pin it right. So before I go on, I'm actually going to fix that by removing these stitches and replacing that and stitching all the way around. And then I'll be back to show you what to do if you did not mess up like I did. I hate that I made that mistake of not lining my pockets up properly, but I'm actually kind of glad I did because that was a great example of why you don't just grab your project off your hoop and just go running to your desk to use your scissors. Because if I had grabbed that off of my machine and off of the frame and taken the clips off and everything, I wouldn't have had the opportunity then to fix the pocket. It would have just been essentially ruined. I mean, I guess it would be fine for personal use, but that's really a bad mistake to make when your pocket doesn't catch. So I went in and I repositioned that pocket. I seam ripped all that half and I repositioned the pocket and I restitched it. And now I'm ready to take it over to my desk and do the cutting. So now I'm at my desk and I've got my project fresh out of the hoop. I've removed, now I have, removed all of the pins and or tape, anything that you used. 
I did have a little bit of a funny, I want to show you guys. I went to the restroom and when I was washing my hands, I realized that I have like a loop on my head. <laughs> the way that I did my hair, I gave myself a little loop. I feel like a Christmas ornament. So anyway, just thought that was a little funny. So now what I'm going to do is locate that little snip that I gave myself in my scallop. And I'm going to find it and stick my scissors in there. I'm using these curved scissors that are perfect for embroidery. And I'm going to carefully trim around the inside of this scallop. Now this is where you should take your time because this will be seen in your final design. This is going to be a raw edge. This is, this is going to be seen when you are finished. You have your finished project. I will probably speed up this part so that you don't have to tell, you don't have to sit there and watch me and you can't tell how nervous I am about cutting on camera. <laughs> One thing I will say about cutting vinyl, a little tip on getting a good result, is to not saw your vinyl so much. Like, do you see what I keep doing? I keep, mm, 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 okay? I keep kind of sawing at it, and that gives you these little, like I just did it, gives you these really jagged edges. What you wanna do when you're cutting vinyl, especially a project like this, is you wanna take your scissors and you want to just start a cut and go all the way to the end of your scissors with it. Don't uh, don't be tempted to open them back up and start again and open them up and open them up and like chew. You're just chewing at the vinyl. So I like to just go mm, and go all the way to the end of my scissors. All the way to the end. Anyway, that's just something I do. I have no idea if you find that useful or not. So now I am pretty fairly confident with my result. And you can see that I've got my little reverse applique and it's got the vinyl in there and the glitter. So you can like shake it. It'll be more obvious after I finish cutting out the book. Now, if you did not use the shaker element of this design, that's fine. If you just wanna use it as a reverse applique or if you just did the applique on the front, whatever. Some people don't want to put stuff in their designs, and I totally understand that. And please don't go telling people that, like, Melissa told you to put spoonfuls of glitter in your embroidery machine. <laughs> Just make sure that if you're using the shaker element that you're really careful. And that goes with anything near your embroidery machine. It is an expensive piece of equipment. It is a tool, not a toy, as I tell my children over and over when I allow them to help me with stuff. Now, since I did not use that fancy backing piece like I showed you, the inside of mine, you can see the ugly back of the stitching, okay? Um, if I had used that piece in the back, it would have been, it would have covered up that stitching, but I didn't. So now I trimmed around. I've got my little, my little applique on the front. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to use my awl, A-W-L. That's the thing we use to install the snaps to poke a hole in there. I'm going to pull my elastic cording through, tie a knot inside, and then I'm going to insert my notebook. And then I can go and shake the glitter. Whee! So that is how we make a reverse applique mini notebook holder. You can use pretty much any applique design to do that. It's just a matter of knowing when to put the fabric and how to do the reverse element of it. And you can add a layer of vinyl and add some little glitter or other elements to it, or you don't have to. You can just use a cool reverse applique design. That's it.